from the journal Crystal Builder. So I'm just here to ensure that if one of you have questions to begin with, I will start. So please just uh, raise your hands if you want to go first. Okay, I'll start. So Davis, uh, thank you very much for this beautiful and uh, really captivating film. I enjoyed it very much. Um, I was uh, thinking about the fact, well, it's, it's very obvious, of course, nowadays when you have the, the very naturalistic cinematic forms available, however, you, you've chosen to uh, portray these uh, great historical figures in cinematic forms of the past, of the silent era. So, uh, would you explain this uh, choice to us? Um, I don't know, like for, uh, for many, many years, uh, I've been interested in, in what Eisenstein have done, uh, has done uh, to, to cinema, what, what is his influence in, in terms of editing and, and uh, narrative, narrative techniques that we are using right now. And that's, that was one of the reasons when, when you come to an idea to make a film about Eisenstein, in this case, in comparison with this uh, Isaiah Berlin, and uh, it's obvious in a way. But at least it, it was, at least for me, it was obvious that you have to somehow uh, make a reference to his uh, to his uh, style, to, to some uh, trends that were uh, actual at that very time when, when they lived and, uh, and their careers were devoted. So, yeah. And of course, it's it's not an easy way because one one thing is to somehow to to make a re research on 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 all the films that have been made at that time, but the other thing is to try to recreate in right now, and uh, and uh, and it's pretty difficult because we're living in an age when when uh, film is dead, when uh, film uh, is uh, substituted by by uh, digital cinema and, uh, and then you have a question whether you choose to somehow to recreate it in terms of this new technology or whether you try to find something in this old technology and in this case the film is completely filmed on 8 millimeter black and white film so it's it's a full scale uh, like cinematic process in this and, and, and for me it's also was and quite an experience because you never, never, you never know. For example, you film an episode and you never know whether there will, will be uh, this material, whether it will be possible to develop it and you know, to find out that, for example, it's too dark maybe or too light <laughs> and then you just throw it away. But, uh, luckily, we only had one particular like, episode where a few shots were not. Well, underdeveloped, so, so yeah, they are not in the film. <laughs> okay, but this is uh, this is great because there's sort of an insecurity in the medium itself. The eight millimeter, as you're saying, it's not uh, certain that that the takes you've uh, you've loved and you think you've shooting them correctly. You're not sure that they can be developed even. Yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, this kind of uncertainty was uh, common at this. At the time when, when uh, Eisenstein was working in it, and, uh, and also you, you mentioned the film like René Clair or other directors who were important at that time, I think they were also, they were always kind of a, a bit afraid of the result because you, you, you could know some things, but there are things that you cannot, cannot determine. And, uh, I think this kind of a it, it's some kind of a concentrating force for, for a, any filmmaker. And, and, uh, in, in this case, it was also for, for me. And it's, it's a sort of an analogy to the inaccessibility of the past as well, I guess. That, uh, well, you have Stalin saying that uh, historical persons should be portrayed correctly. Correctly, yes. It's uh, <laughs> quite an absurd. Uh, <laughs> Um, demand, but how do you uh, relate to that demand? I, for me, the history has all, all, always been a subject. I mean, his, the, the, the 
a connection between films or cinema and history. And, and, uh, and I think that, uh, at least this is my kind of a, my idea about it, and, and, <laughs> and uh, that uh, you somehow uh, the audience uh, has to be allowed to, to differentiate the, the stylization of the film and the historical facts, because of course uh, you can refer to history as some kind of a written history, as a scientific history that you can find like there, this and this happened, for example. At the same time, it's almost impossible uh, in the film to use such such kind of facts because you have to build certain dramaturgical structure. And, and um, to succeed in this, I think there is a, a, a very narrow kind of a pass, and, and then this narrow pass is is this trying to stylize this history, so allowing the audience to to make this 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 kind of a division between the stylization, understanding, yeah, this is this is what we call cinematic, and this is what we call historic, and I, I, or historical, and then so it somehow for me it's important to make audience to be um, close to the film, to be more reflective, reflective. And, 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 uh, and I think this division, it already proposes that you have to be reflective, reflective towards what you are seeing.